Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, Dyer delivered 55 TBM 900 aircraft in 2015. F-35 ejection seats still place limits on minimum pilot weight. SpaceX to try another floating platform landing. I'm Brie Cross, it's January 13th, 2016, and this is Airborne Unlimited. DAR's airplane business unit delivered a total of 55 TBM 900s in 2015, which is a 10% increase compared to 2014 and the second best year since the first TBM single-engine turboprop aircraft was provided to a customer in 1991. The 2015 geographic distribution reflected global economic trends last year as TBM 900 deliveries were led by 44 deliveries to the United States, Latin America ranked second as five aircraft were provided in Brazil and two in Mexico. Europe was third, based on the two deliveries in Germany and one each in France and Spain. Despite the good showing in 2015, Nicolas Chabert, the senior vice president of DARS Airplane Business Unit, said that 2016 is expected to be a challenging year for the international aircraft marketplace. Last year, a weight restriction for pilots flying the F-35 Lightning Fighter was put into place that was unusual. Rather than the concern of pilots being overweight, the problem was that pilots might not weigh enough. The issue was pilots weighing under 136 pounds not being able to safely eject from the aircraft. It was determined that pilots weighing 136 pounds or less were at an increased risk of neck injury during low-speed ejections. The Pentagon has been working on multiple fixes for the problem with main contractor Lockheed Martin and ejection seat contractor Martin Baker. The fixes were initially expected to be completed by 2017, but the Air Force said last week in an email that it was going to be no sooner than 2018 before lighter weight pilots could again fly the plane. It's reported the three fixes being worked on are a head support panel, installation of a weight selection function, and a lighter weight helmet. After the break, SpaceX goes again for a barge landing in the Pacific. Redbird is quickly becoming the industry standard for flight training. Since Redbird introduced its revolutionary FMX in 2007, colleges, universities, and flight training operations around the world have integrated Redbird products into their curriculum. It's time to discover what Redbird can do for you. Join the migration. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. Welcome back. If you would like to be a supporter of Airborne Unlimited, send an email to jim at aero-news.net. When SpaceX launches NASA's Jason 3 ocean monitoring satellite into orbit on Sunday, January 17th, from Vandenberg Air Force Base in California, they will again attempt to recover the Falcon 9 booster. And this time, they're once again going for a recovery on a floating platform. SpaceX has tried twice before to land boosters on its automated floating landing platform, but was not successful in either attempt. It's reported SpaceX will be using one of its earlier Falcon 9 version 1.1 boosters, and a landing attempt on the drone ship will require less fuel for the landing attempt. This is the last time this version of their booster will be used. With some 2000 Aero TV programs webcast to cyberspace, sometimes it can be fun to look back and enjoy some of the places we've seen, the flyers we've met, and the planes we've flown. Here's a look at one of our favorite Aero TV classic episodes. Right now we're currently offering four models. Our smallest plane, of course, is the 103 Legal Firefly. It's a 40 horsepower plane, falls into the ultralight category, 103. When FAR 103 legitimized ultralight aircraft in 1980, Homer Kolb was a pioneer in the development of the ultralight recreational movement. This video reviews the history of his aircraft and brings us up to date through 2015. Search Homer Kolb's Genius Lives On on Aero TV's news channel. After these messages, European Space Agency heads for a manned moon flight. Sandia introduces the new SAI 340 Quattro TSO'd airspeed, attitude, altitude, and slip. With integral backup battery, 
Safety never looked so good. See it now at www.sandia.aero. Concord's recombinant gas RG series sealed battery technology produces a high performance battery with the advantages of being pre-tested and fully charged at the factory. Find out more about Concord's entire line of batteries at www.concordbattery.com. Concord, the heart of your aircraft. Welcome back. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing some other interesting stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. The European Space Agency has plans to send people back to the moon by the end of the decade. The agency said robots would be landed first and then followed by a series of human missions starting in the early 2020s. A coalition of conservation groups have filed a suit to stop the U.S. Forest Service from using helicopters in the Frank Church River of No Return Wilderness to place radio tags on elks. The Federal Wilderness Act prohibits the use of motorized vehicles in wilderness areas. The General Aviation Manufacturers Association has announced that applications are now being accepted for two prestigious aviation scholarships. The scholarships are awarded to high school and college students. Details are available on the GAMMA website. Another wrongful death lawsuit has been filed against a contract ATC provider and BAE Systems. The accident that occurred on August 16th last year resulted in the fatal injury of all five people on board two aircraft involved in a mid-air collision. A lawsuit seeks over $100,000 from the Hayden, Idaho Chamber of Commerce in repayment of a loan for the Thunder Over the Prairie Air Show in 2004. The air show was a financial failure, and it's claimed the Chamber of Commerce is delinquent on the loan payment. Well, that's the trip around the patch. Now let's move on to the rest of the news. The expression, a marriage made in heaven, may seem like a cliché, but in this case, it seems to apply. The Experimental Aircraft Association and the Academy of Model Aeronautics have signed a Memorandum of Understanding that expands the organization's joint efforts to bring the possibilities of flight to more people. Jack J. Pelton, EAA Chairman and CEO, said, quote, There has been a long connection between the aircraft modeling community, represented by AMA, and the world of grassroots aviation with EAA. Bob Brown, AMA President, added, quote, the AMA and its members are excited to continue our partnership with the EAA and to begin work on how both organizations, through our combined efforts and activities, will promote and increase aviation participation across all age groups. The memo signed during AMA's annual AMA Expo in Ontario, California, outlines areas where EAA and AMA will work together in program development, promotion, and advocacy. Other areas of emphasis will include youth education programs and visibility at major events, including EAA AirVenture Oshkosh and AMA Expo. Well, that's our program for today. Remember to get comprehensive real-time 24-7 coverage of the latest aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Remember that Airborne Unlimited is streamed daily Monday through Friday with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. Please join us and a growing roster of over 100 outstanding industry associations and organizations every weekday for the best in aviation and aerospace news from the staff of the Aero News Network, the aviation world's most comprehensive news and information resource.